There are a few things that can rival the granny square as a classic crochet icon, but the crochet African flower hexagon is right up there with it. At least it is for me. This bright and cheery motif is perfect for making blankets, pillows, clothing. You can even make some adorable stuffed animals with them. Now, when it comes to yarn choice for this motif, you can pretty much use anything you want. I always think it's best to practice with a medium weight yarn because it's just a nice, happy medium. I'll be using a five millimeter crochet hook throughout this tutorial and for the yarns that I have chosen, but use whatever hook size you think is best suited to the yarn that you're practicing with. I have no project in mind for these, but that's the beauty of working with little motifs like this. You can just use up scrap bits of yarn, tuck them away in like a basket or whatever, and when you have enough to make a pillow or a bag or whatever you want, you've got this little collection and it's almost like a quick win project. You could do a solid color. You can make your entire flower one color and your join colors different colors. I mean, really the sky's the limit. So I think today for the video, I'm going to use four different colors like all of this, the hexagons that I have made before, starting with this yarn. Now, once again, I'm using yarns that have been in my stash for a while, a lot of which I just have little bits left over. And some of them, I don't know if they're available. This yarn, for example, is Willow and Lark Nest. The color is Black Current. I have had this for quite a while. If it is still available, actually, if any of the yarns are still available, I'll link them below just in case you wanna check them out. Like any round that you would start, you can do so in a couple of different ways. You can either use a magic ring or you can start off with a chain and make your single crochets in the chain. I do think that when you close the opening completely, it looks a little bit better, but that's totally personal preference. I'm doing the magic ring here. It's my preferred method. This is one of those things that once you know how to do it, it's not quite so bad, but it does take a little while to get the hang of it. So the goal is to have six single crochets in your first round. So working with a magic loop, I will make six single crochets. If you wanna start off with a chain, I would say you could go with a chain three, join with your slip stitch to make that ring, and then make six single crochets in the ring. Doesn't matter how you get there, but you just wanna have six single crochets for everything to work out. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I do like to join at the end of this round to keep everything nice and tidy. No spirals here for this one. So that's it, that's all for round one. To start round two, I'm gonna stick with the same color, but know that you can absolutely change colors at any point if you want to. I'm gonna chain three, and this chain three will count as one double crochet and a chain one. Then I'll make two double crochets in the next stitch. And then chain one and make two double crochets in the next stitch and repeat. The goal at the end of this round is to have six groups of two double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and the chain two, or three rather, at the beginning, remember I said that one counted as a double crochet in a chain one. Well, there's only one double crochet there, right? So we need to have two. And I like to work my last stitch of the round, any round really, behind the chain because I think it looks a little bit better that way. You can trust me on this if you want to, or you can experiment and do whatever works best for you. Then join with your second chain and then, see for me, it just looks a little bit neater that way. You always end up having just a slightly bigger gap at the front or the back. 
whenever you're joining and stuff like this. So play around with it, do what works best for you. The ultimate goal is to have six groups of two double crochets with a chain in between them. So now I'm gonna change colors. There's a couple different ways that you can do this as well. Use whatever method you're most comfortable with. I personally like using the magic knot. It totally works for me. I haven't had it fail me yet, so I feel pretty comfortable with it. So this next color, I think we'll use this peach yarn. This one actually is available still. Um, this is Malabrigo Rios. And I think the color is Almond Blossom. Almond Blossom. A really pretty color. So we need to have enough yarn to tie this onto. So I have undone my slip stitch in my last double crochet, just so I have a little piece to work with. And we'll tie the new color around the old color. And then let's slide that up a teeny bit. Then with this section of yarn, you'll tie this to this. This always gets a little bit fiddly. Okay, so with your two knots, pull them, pull them real tight, and then you can just trim it off. And I'll finish up those last two stitches. So with this method, you obviously don't have any extra ends to weave in, but you do have knots in your project. So that's kind of the trade-off. Everything comes with a cost, right? <laughs> so the cost is having a knot in your project. And if you're cool with that and you hate weaving in, in ends, this might be something that you can try. So for round three, we need our hook to be in this chain one space there. So slip stitch there and then chain two. This does count as a double crochet. And the reason I'm cha chaining two instead of the usual three is because my stitches, my tension is a little bit tighter and my stitches are a little bit shorter than the average person. So I chain two because that's that height matches my double crochet a little bit better. If you know you crochet looser and you like chaining three, then yeah, you can totally chain three there. So we want to have two double crochets a chain two and two double crochets in every single chain one space. So once you finish that one, you'll just jump right over to the next one. Double crochet two, chain two, double crochet two. So at the end of this round, you will join with the slip stitch to your top chain. And it should look something like this. Pretty easy so far, right? There's, there's actually really no complicated round in this pattern and we're halfway done. So it's really fast, right? Okay, so for the next round, we need our hook to be in this chain two space. So we need to slip stitch in the double crochet and the chain two space. and we'll chain two, which counts as a double crochet. And then the goal for this round is to have seven double crochets in every chain two space. And once you have that done, you don't have to do anything other than jump right to the next chain two space and make seven double crochets. So if you were to just look up the African flower crochet pattern, you'll find a lot of different varieties. This one I think is, I don't know, it's the one that I have seen the most often. So it kind of feels the like more classic to me. I really like this one because it's easy to crochet. But yeah, you'll find lots of different patterns and different variations of this motif. So this one will be a six petal hexagon or flower, but you might see eight petal flowers as well. And a lot of times with those, you'll find that those motifs are square in shape instead of hexagon. This one should give you like a pretty good foundation in 
general African flower motifs as far as that goes. So if you find a pattern out there that you really love that's really similar but maybe a little bit different, with these skills that you're picking up with just working this really basic classic one, you should be totally good to go to try any other pattern variety, any version of this pattern. So at the end of this round, you'll just join with a slip stitch to your top turning chain there. And that'll finish things off. So I promised a different alternative to changing colors. And this is a really cool trick. If you haven't tried this before, you do have ends to weave in. If you don't want knots in your project, it's a good way to go. But I would say this joining method is perfect if you hate the look of turning chains. So we'll fasten off like normal here. I'm actually just going to pull up on that. So with the new yarn, make your slip knot. Let's do ourselves a favor and make our tail a little bit longer. I'm good for that. You'll place the, the new loop on your hook. So we want to have our first stitch in the same place that we had it before. So I'll insert my hook through that chain and I'm making a single crochet. So I'm just yarning over, pulling up a loop, making my single crochet like normal. And so with that, I don't have an extra turning chain. And this probably wasn't the best stitch to show this example on um, because a single crochet is really short, but this is actually quite a cool technique, especially with double crochet. So I guess we'll look at that one <laughs> in the next round. So from here, we need a single crochet in all of the stitches that are part of this little shell or flower petal. And when you get to this section here, we're working a long single crochet. So this one can be a little bit fiddly. It's probably the only fiddly thing in this whole project, but it's super easy once you get the hang of it. Insert your hook between these two double crochets, yarn over, and pull up a loop. We're still working a single crochet, so those motions haven't changed, but the thing that's very important for this stitch is you have to pull it up to the same height as your hook because otherwise you'll scrunch everything down too much and that's not really the look we're going for, right? If you look at this one, we're trying to make a big long section there <laughs> so that it kind of separates the flower petals. So we'll make that nice and loose, finish the single crochet, and if it seems a little bit sloppy to you, it's probably perfect. And that's the repeat. We'll single crochet into every single double crochet of the petals and between the petals you'll make your long single crochet. I don't know how much you're really able to see on this yarn. This yarn is just one of my absolute favorites. It came in one of my knit crates a long long time ago so it's no longer available, unfortunately, and I'm just savoring the last few scraps that I have because it's it's got a subtle like shimmer to it and the the way that the color isn't fully saturated everywhere. I don't know. I just I totally am in love with this yarn. So unfortunately, I won't be able to link this one below, but I think most of the others I should be able to. I really don't know how I feel about the blue with the purple. I don't know. You know, I'm using a bunch of scraps from my stash, and anytime I do that, it's just so challenging <laughs> to try to put colors together. This palette is really not something that I would have picked before. Most of it. You keep crocheting. I'm going to show you. <laughs> the color palette that I have picked out. Like basically these yarns that have been in my stash forever that I absolutely love. So these colors I would totally put together. This, like you couldn't get more me with this color palette. 
but I always pick something like this. <laughs> so I wanted to do something a little bit different and something that was kind of more fall-like because as I'm working on this at the end of summer, I would hopefully like to put this together into a project in the fall. So I originally nixed this blue and replaced it with this green color because I thought that that could maybe be a little bit more fall of a palette. And I like that. I think that's kind of pretty, but when I got a few of the flowers worked up, I just, I wasn't as excited about the greens in here. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just, I'm just not a green person. <laughs> I don't know why. These actually, like, they're, they're very pretty together, I think. But I think it's when you add them with the others that I start to question <laughs> my choices. So then I thought, okay, maybe if I don't like the green as much, perhaps I would like the purple better. And again, I love this palette. I think it's really pretty together. But for some reason, for some reason, I'm just not, I'm just not loving it at the moment. So then I brought my blue back in. And again, I thought that this was a very pretty color combination. So I think I have picked out several palettes that I like individually, but maybe not one that I like cohesively as a project. So it'll be really interesting to see what comes of these hexagons and if I actually use all of them together in a project, but that's just kind of how I like to work, I suppose. It's really not the most efficient way. I can look at a cluster of yarns, right, and know that I really like that palette together, but then sometimes when I get it into a project, it's like totally different and, and I maybe don't love it so much. Okay, so to finish off this round, we'll join with the first single crochet. Whoops, actually, before we do that, don't forget your last long single crochet here, like I was about to do. And then slip stitch to your first single crochet. Okay, so I promised I would show you that really interesting, the, the standing method of starting with a double crochet stitch, because I think that's really where you'll see the value in it. So we'll go ahead and finish this off. Remember, we start off with a, a slip knot, and then we'll place that on the hook, but we're gonna double crochet. So yarn over, just as if you were gonna start. You'll probably have to hold on to the back here because you know you could just very easily <laughs> spin it back around. So yarn over, hold on to it with your finger. We're just starting in the same place as where we fastened off and then work your double crochet like normal. You'll probably have to hold on to this because it'll still spin on you, but work the double crochet like you normally would. And then there, double crochet. We don't have any chains, turning chains to look at. It's just a really neat, clean way of doing this. So you do have the ends to weave in and that is the sacrifice with this method. But if you absolutely hate the way a turning chain looks, then you might find that this is a perfect solution for you. So now we've got our first double crochet. We'll make a double crochet in the next two stitches. And it can be a little fiddly with starting and stopping this. And the stitch count is pretty important here because we're making our six corners. So if you got yourself maybe shifted back one stitch with this join method, that's actually pretty possible. What you're looking for is the middle of these seven stitches. And that's where we'll make the corner. So the corner pattern is one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. And then double crochet in the next seven stitches. And then double check yourself to make sure you're putting it in the right spot. Remember, 
you want to work your corners in the middle of the seven from each petal. So the way I figure that out is I find the long stitch and I count one, two, three, and then that means this one is my corner stitch. So let's say if you are not using the standing stitch to start off these last couple of rounds, the way that you would have handled that for the single crochet round, I generally don't count a chain one as a stitch when I single crochet. So I will typically single crochet in the same space. And that's the way I have the pattern worded as well. And then for this round, you would just start with a chain two or chain three, whichever you do for your double crochets. So nothing different there. One, two, three, this is the corner. Now there's something else you can play with too on this final round. When you make your corners with just one double crochet, one chain, one double crochet, it ends up being a little bit more rounded and it, it really does work out better and lay flatter that way. But if you really want like really pointy corners to your hexagon, you can experiment with doing two double crochets, a chain two and two double crochets. There might be instances where it's a little too wavy, so you might have to play around with it, but that is one way that you can define your corners a little bit more. You could maybe even try one double crochet and two chains and see if you like the way that looks better. And then at the end of the round, you should have four stitches left over. So we'll make a double crochet in the last four. And then join with a slip stitch to your first double crochet of the round. So if you want to give these a try, and I think it's definitely worth your time. If you want to experiment and play around a little bit this weekend or this evening, this is a really fun way of using up just a few minutes of time for your crafting. So this version of the pattern is written up on my website. I have that linked in the description below. Behooked.com is our shop for all of our PDF patterns. We have some digital pattern bundles that I've curated some fun projects I think that you'll like to work on, but you can also make your own bundles with some pattern discounts for buying multiples. We have some t-shirts if you're into that sort of thing. And we also have some printable cards, bands, and tags that you can add to your gifts. You can provide the care instructions, personalize notes with the cards and that sort of thing. Thank Thank you so much for the support there. Thank you so much for watching. Happy hooking and I'll see you in the next one. Hold on. I think I'm starting to figure this out. What if we use these colors, which again, totally a color palette that I would pick. I love these colors together. We'll also use the blue the darker blue because I'm obsessed with this yarn and I really, really want to make some kind of project with it instead of just a bunch of little tiny things. But what about the green? Oh wait, we definitely want to use this too. We would definitely want to use this color. So I don't know. What do you think about this color arrangement? I do really like that. I really, really like that. Does it look fall enough? I don't know. I really feel, I feel drawn to the purple. Why do I want to use purple? I'm not usually a purple kind of person, but I'm liking it a lot more. I'm definitely overthinking this. This is classic Brittany. <laughs> I have a hard time going with my gut because my gut tends to change a lot. <laughs>